back and forth on both sides experiment? We've, we've pretty much, you know, uh, we've worked him some a few days. We've gotten him some one-on-one -on -one reps, and uh, and he and he did it, and he's done a great job, and, and he he absolutely could play corner, but. Uh, we feel great about our depth at corner. You know, these guys have really stepped up for us. They've done a great job. Uh, so, and then what he's done offensively, he's kind of, you know, once you started cooking, I said we need to coach him a little bit. He's taken to it. He's a natural, he's just a natural ball player. So he's, uh, he's made a lot of plays in camp and, and he's shown that he's not overwhelmed. It's not too big for him. Uh, but he's a guy that really throughout the course of his career, if we needed him, we could, he's always going to be available. Uh, so I'm really excited. We've seen enough to know that, that he can do it if we need him. What about Jamal and Dee? Just how have they progressed since spending this Yeah, I mean, they're good. Uh, I think Dee has really taken a huge, you know, huge strides, and, and Jamal's coming. Uh, but, uh, you know, both of them are, are you know, good players. and. We feel like we hit on, on both of them and then Kobe McLeod as well. We think Kobe's made a lot of progress and we're gonna count on those three guys and then Wade. So we got that's our four depth guys. Uh, they gotta they gotta play and, and be ready to go. Special teams, you know, any situation. So this has been a, a really good camp because they've got a ton of work. A ton of work. Well, Shelton was a guy that really made an impression in the spring. Avion, what has he done this fall? Has he been at all similar? Avion Terrell. Yeah, I mean, Avion's he's special. I mean, I mean, really, I could say that about all three of those guys: Shelton, Strozier, and Avion. I, I just, I think, I think all three of those guys can play at a high level. Um, you know, they're all, they all have different attributes, and they all have, you know, uh, different things that need to continue to work on, but. All three can play, you know, so uh, we're really blessed there. You know, we got, because you got J. Lou, you got Sheridan, you got uh, Toriano, and, and you got Nate. So these, it's, a, it's a really, really good room. And uh, I know this, it's been a while since we've been in the situation that we're in, so I'm excited about it. But all three of those freshmen uh, have, have, have done a great job for us. And then Avion is, I mean, he's just way wise beyond his years. He's physically and mentally, you know, ready to play. So are they in the mix with Toriano? Oh and yeah, they're all in the mix. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, every day, they're all in the mix. Every time they step on this field, there's nobody that's not in the mix. They're they're in a, they're capable of competing with with anybody, with our with our starters, with the backups. They can compete across the board. With uh, camp almost over, what's your evaluation of that type of practice? Uh, I I feel good. Uh, I really do. I feel confident in the guys that we've been working there, and, and that we've got uh, not just one, but we got multiple answers. Uh, you know, not ready to you know uh, roll out our starting lineup yet, but I feel good about again the guys that have been working there, and that's and that's uh, Tristan and you know, Marcus uh, has gotten a, a good amount of work, and sadly, I think all three of those guys can get the job done, and certainly Blake could bump over there as well if he needed to. Mitchell Mays. So one of our main objectives in this camp was to really solidify our tackle depth. And uh, I feel great about all those guys. You know, Tristan, Collin, uh, Mitchell, Blake, um, and uh, who's over? Get somebody. There's five of them, five guys. Uh, so I feel good about the depth. Marcus, it was Marcus, it was Marcus, Marcus. I think we got five guys for sure that could, that could really function and win for us if we, if we need them. So now we just got to, you know, decide how we want to roll it out, start, and then we'll go from there. How's it Trotter's hamstring was able to go today? Maybe hold him back? Well, no, we held him and Barrett today. We held a lot of those guys. But he, he's good. He'll, he'll be rolling. If we played today, he'd have played. Uh, but uh, we, we, held, we held several of those high snap guys. And because uh, and we just, like I said, we need to force the issue with some guys. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure what Barrett and, Jeremiah can do. And we've had a very physical camp. They've had a lot of work. Um, so feel confident about uh, where those guys are. We held Tyler Davis today, XT, Maskell, you know, just trying to, all those young ends, all those backers.
you know, all those D tackles, uh, getting all those guys a bunch of work. So it's good, good for everybody. And is it a knee injury? Knee injury for Burley? Excuse me. For who? For Big Burley? Yeah, he's got a uh, nothing, nothing long term. Nothing long term. He's not going to have to have anything surgery, any surgical procedure, anything. He's got lower body injury, but uh, you know, hopefully he'll be ready sooner or later. He might miss a game, but not anything that's going to keep him out uh, for long term. Gavin, yeah, how would you describe the level of trust that's growing between Cade and Garrett? Uh, I mean, I think they've got a lot of trust. I mean, they've, you know, this has been going since January, so it's a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of meetings, a lot of hours by the time you get to this point. So, um, you know, they're, they're, it's great. You know, Garrett's done an awesome job. The guys, uh, the guys, I think, all have trust, not just in the staff, but they have trust in each other. And uh, certainly, I think, uh, all trust Cade. I think he's done a great job of really, you know, asserting himself as the leader and, uh, you know, just responding to whatever situation we put him in out here. How did Cade look today? Really good. It was a nice job. Uh, he's, been, he's been outstanding the whole camp. I mean, the same guy. You know, what I love about him is he, he, can, he can make a bad play and he'll bounce right back. You know, he'll come right back. Um, and, I love that about it. You know, he's not a guy kind of like Deshaun in that regard. You know, Deshaun would throw an interception in a heartbeat, right? But nobody panicked because you were going to score 40. And uh, you, you just have that same feel with Cade. You know, I mean, he's just, he, he may throw a pick, but he's coming right back. Uh, he's, just got the, he's just got the right mentality. And I love that about him. But he's, he's a, he loves ball, he loves practice, he loves meetings, and he's just got this energy that kind of lifts everybody. So he's, uh, He's been really, really, really good. I mean, you know, he's a he's a key to us. I mean, he stays healthy. We got a chance to be a good football team. That ability to bounce back is that something he kind of developed as the starter now, or did you see that a little bit last year too? Uh, I think I think it's just kind of how he's wired. Really, it's, that's just his DNA coming up, you know. Uh, and then now that he's the starter, you know, there's not as much pressure on him as maybe last year. And the young guy, you're coming in, it's all new, new people. Uh, it's competitive, all these things, and and uh, you don't have quite as much opportunity. And uh, but you know he's, I just think it's in his natural DNA. You know, I think that's just who he is, man. He's just a glass half full kind of guy all the time. I guess Garrett was talking about Shipley being a very versatile guy. He can use it a lot of different ways. We didn't want to overload him. How much have you guys been able to fill up Shipley's play in terms of using him in different? Places at this point. Yeah, I mean, we held him today. Uh, he and Maffa again. Love, man. I love our backs. That's the one. If you ask me about one position on this team, it's running back, man. We these backs, Dominique, Keith Adams, uh, Jay Haynes, and Jarvis. Wow. Uh, and that's really what I wanted to see today. I wanted to see these four backs kind of take Shipley and Maffa off, and let's let's let Streco. Streco is another. Streco popped two or three runs today. I mean, it's just we got a really good room, man, and uh, yeah, I'm really proud of them. And those guys uh, are doing a good job of competing. And Shipley is obviously a guy that, that can do a lot of things for sure. And, you know, I mean, I think I think you know as we get into the course of the season and you start game planning, then it comes down to you know just getting guys touches. You know, we're not going to come. We're going to go into every game with a plan to make sure Shipley's touching the ball and off it. You know, I, I think both of those guys could be thousand yard rushers. Uh, if, if we have the type of season that we want to have, uh, but, but certainly Shipley is going to be involved in a lot of things. I mean, he's we're going to screen it to him, we're going to hand it to him, we're going to throw it to him, and he's going to return it. So, you know, uh, I don't think we've put too much on his plate. I think he's he's one of those guys you can't give him enough. How much progress has Lindy been made? A lot. I mean, he's done a good job. I'm confident with him and Trent. I think I think we got three centers. You know, Trent's played a lot of guard. And he's also bumped out and played a little right tackle and uh, done a good job. So uh, I think I think we've got some flexibility uh, there. Lenticum could also play guard. But, you know, they've done a good job because I don't really notice them. You know, uh, when I'm noticing the center, it's usually not good. Uh, so, you know, they, they're just doing their job. And I, and I like that. I think Dietrich took a step forward today. Uh, not at center, but he was a guy I noticed a little bit today. Uh, tight. And, you know, again, 14 days in, kind of guy, everybody's got sea legs and just kind of, you know, good to see him push through uh, on a tough day. Got a lot of reps. Khalil Barnes, uh, with so many talented guys in front of him and around him, what is your outlook for him this year and what 
He'll, he'll go and play. He'll be on special teams. A lot of these guys, you know, their biggest role initially might be special teams. I mean, you got to have – I mean, that's a third of the game. And, you know, you, you can't have all of our starters playing every special team snap too. So, you got to have guys that can, you know, uh, have big roles in that regard. And, and certainly I think he's, he's a, be a core special teams guy. But, I mean, he's he, – I, I think he plays early. Uh, I think he can compete with anybody we have. You know, any veteran we have, I mean, he's a, he's a really talented young player who gets it. Um, and he hasn't played, but, you know, I think he's I think he's game ready. And I don't think we'd hesitate at all to put him in the game. You know, and I think he can play multiple spots, probably three different spots. So that gives him, you know, his ability to really understand things, gives him, you know, a little more opportunity than maybe some other young guys. Yeah, well, you break another camp here. I'm curious how camp has changed for you Well, I mean, it's a lot's changed. I mean, obviously, you go back to when I first started. I mean, it was it was you know two a days, like real two a days, uh, like real pads, uh, and it was different, different deal. So uh, the rules have changed as far as the parameters of camp. So you've had to we've had to adapt and adjust to that. Um, but my approach, my temperament, uh, the expectations, none of that's changed uh, because it takes what it takes. You know, it, it, you can't you you, don't, you can't change what it takes, and uh, so you have there's all those things have not changed at all. You know, camp is I love camp because it's the one time of year that we are together all day, all day. I mean, from morning until late at night, we're together, and it's just this it's this this mat to me. It's just a magical time with your team, and it can make or break you. Uh, as far as, you know, what gets developed in camp. You know, the chemistry, the togetherness, uh, you know, all those type of things. Everybody really understanding their roles, buying into the team, buying into what it takes, uh, all those things. So none of that has changed. The biggest change would be just kind of the format of what we can do from a practice standpoint. That's changed drastically over the years. Uh, as as you know, we've gained more knowledge and more, learned more things and whatever. And, and um, so that part's different. Um, but that's about it. With the two-way guys like Tink um, and, and coaching those guys in your career, have they mostly gotten into one spot after a year or so, or have they consistently kind of waffled offense defense? Um, Do they settle into a spot usually? Or well, if you go back, you know, Adam Humphreys was a guy that, that kind of his whole career, he was our emergency corner, DB mm -hmm. guy. Uh, Ray Ray was the same way, you know. In fact, we got lean a couple one of one of his years. We got real lean, and he had to. I think he played about a whole game against NC State, maybe uh, one year. So he was always a guy that we kind of kept in the mix. You know, obviously we had DK early on as a receiver, moved him. TJ Green came in here, played receiver as a freshman, moved him to safety. Uh, so it just depends, you know. From from it's a case by case deal, and it's sometimes it's just based on the need of your team and opportunity for that player uh, for the long term. And, uh, you know, so then you get a kid like uh, uh, Tink, who, who we've seen enough in camp to know, again, he, he, can, he can do it, you know. I mean, he can line up and play corner in a heartbeat, but we feel great about the guys we have. And then what we've seen with him offensively, we're going to kind of – we've been just kind of – just like we started, we started him off as an offensive guy in the meetings, learning, and then just, hey, we'll cross train. So I don't see that changing in the near future. Uh, anything could change down the road, but, uh, you know, it just is a case by case basis with those guys. Vic Beasley, you know, Vic Beasley was a guy, I had no idea what he was. Uh, you know, he was, I was like, all right, we'll try you at tight end, right? In his first year, and I'm like, he can't play tight end. And then we're like, let's play him at linebacker. He looks like a linebacker, right? And then it was like, ah, he's probably not a linebacker. And, you know, was, I think it was his third year. I'm like, I went to Marion Hobby and I said, hey, the best thing this guy does is run and change direction. And let's just let him get after the quarterback on third down. And I think he led our team in sacks that year as a redshirt sophomore. Maybe, maybe played less than 100 plays. And, and he bought into it. And boom, here we go. So sometimes it just takes a little while of the process to really figure out 
you know, what's the best position for some of these guys. Uh, you just got to coach them a little while. I guess we talked about um, on the ACC network that two defensive linemen got second round grades. I'm guessing those are Rook and Tyler. Um, what are they getting out of this fifth year? I mean, in what ways can they improve? Are you guys getting more from them than they are another year of college? Well, you have to ask them that. Uh, I mean, you know, they, they both wanted to come back because they wanted to, first of all, they want to win a national championship. That's, that's something personal to them that they, they feel like that they've left on the table here. They don't feel like they've maximized their time here. You know, Rook in particular felt like that, you know, he's, he's got first round ability and, uh, you know, just another year of development. And, you know, they, they both wanted to, uh, they loved playing for Nick. And they wanted to have another year playing for Nick, so there, I think there's a lot of a lot of factors. Uh, but you know, they certainly didn't stay because they hated here. Uh, I think they've enjoyed their journey, and and I think they just wanted one more year to really, really better prepare themselves for the long term of their NFL career. And that's just kind of how both of those guys are wired. You know, there's a lot of guys in a hurry to get there to to be a backup, and those guys are, I think, a little bit more focused on trying to play a long time. And, and they want to be, I think they want to be in a position to maybe start as rookies. And I think and that's, that's all their decisions and totally on their own. I, I thought I thought they were both leaving for sure. I didn't think any of those uh, guys that came back were coming back. Uh, Putnam was the only one that I felt like we might get back. Uh, but the rest of them I thought were all leaving. And so, um, you know, it's been really good having all those guys back in camp and man, they've been They've been locked in. They've been focused. Uh, so it's been good to see. You mentioned Nick Beeson. I talked to him a couple weeks ago about his weight loss journey. Um, and he took that hit they're talking about vulnerability. Can you actually not hear me? This is the first time yeah. ever. Yeah. Can you hear me? We've got something going on. Well, I mean, I think that ultimately is what makes a great coach is you know, the ability to connect, you know, with the player. And and Nick is as good as I've ever been around when it comes to, you know, connecting with his players. Uh, and he's just transparent, you know. He's tra he's transparent. And he's he he he's got a, he will tell his story, right? He's he knows how to to uh, relate to these guys, and he will use his story to do that. And he's got. An amazing journey that he's been on, but but you know Nick is a guy that's. I mean, he was Christian Wilkins before Christian Wilkins, right? He left here. I think he was the first guy to leave here with a master's degree, you know, defensive lineman in three and a half years, uh, and he was just an, a, a captain. You know, he, he's he's just one of the best people you'll ever meet. I mean, Nick Nick would be an amazing head coach. I mean, he's got all everything that you could possibly want. Uh, to be a head coach. I mean, he really gets it on all levels. And, um, you know, so I think for people to really trust you and to buy into who you are, they got to know who you are. And, you know, you've got to be able to be transparent and open up. Um, and and he, he really, he's always, I guess that comes natural to him. It comes natural to him. And uh, so, you know, these guys, uh, they, they love him for sure. He does a great job, and, and he loves he, he loves his players. Uh, that's the other mark of a great coach is, you know, just love your players. And, and he loves Clemson. You know, so uh, he's done an unbelievable job for us since he got here. Speaking of love on the team, Sheridan Jones talked about loving the offense, like really just loving them because they make them better. Yeah. Can you speak on it? Yeah, I mean that's listen. This is this is a, a game that you practice a lot more than you play. I mean, you only get to play 15 days if it's perfect, right? So you got to love practice, and it's what you practice against is is what prepares you. And you know, I I really believe one of the reasons we've been you know so consistent for a long long time around here is because it practice is hard, and you know it's just good competition. You get exposed on the practice field. And so you have to come, you can't take a day off. And that, that competitive, uh, that competitiveness, you know, drives performance and uh, forces guys to, 
I mean, they got to get better. Uh, so, you know, we're really fortunate that way because we can challenge each other on both sides of the ball. And uh, you got to get better. I mean, Sheridan's a guy now. He's he's on. This is it's his fifth year, and he's seen a lot of dudes over his time. So he's got a he's got a, a, a visual in his head of what it looks like. I mean, he's been covering guys here for a long time, and, and it's not easy. Um, and vice versa, you know, with the receivers going against the DBs here. So it makes everybody better. It's always been Davis Allen and Jake Burning School tight end. How have you seen Jake Handel being the guy, you know, at tight end? Oh, Jake's, Jake's been ready to be the guy since he got here. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to be patient, right? You know, Davis Allen is pretty good. And, and I think Jake, he was, he wanted to be the guy, but he wasn't ready to be the guy. You know, he, he just maturity-wise wasn't quite there um, and, you know, physically wasn't quite there, but, but, but was Ill, still able to be a productive player for us. And, man, he had a great guy like Davis Allen to really show it. And, man, I'm really proud of Brenny. I mean, he's, he's done great. I mean, he's, he is – sky's the limit for this guy. I mean, he's got his body in a great spot. He's – He's worked really hard. He's matured. Uh, he's smart. He doesn't make a lot of mental errors. He's got you know elite ball skills. But he, he really gets it, and he's and he's hyper competitive. I mean, he is a really competitive dude. So, I mean, he there's there's no limit to him. I mean, he's got two years left, and I mean, he could be as good as we've had uh, or the best. He's got he's got that type of ability in him. So hopefully he can stay healthy, and if he does, I think. You're going to see that number nine making a lot of plays this year.